So I, I just finished watching the 2024 Samsung Galaxy Unpacked event. And, you know, I have some thoughts. Uh, I mean, I guess I, first thing I should say is I do not have the phone in my possession. I, I am not an influencer, so I have zero hands-on experience with this device. It is just me and my opinions after watching the, what, maybe 45 minute to an hour long little keynote. I did watch a portion of one YouTuber's uh, initial impressions, and I'll probably watch some other ones, but I can imagine there's some type of embargo, so they can't do a, a full review yet. Uh, and not that the reviews or even these people's initial impressions are going to skew my opinions too much on the device. Um, I've, I've purchased S23, 2, or three. I think two S22, so one regular and then one a one plus. Uh, I think I even had an S20 FE or something. I don't know, I, another one. Um, but the unfortunate truth is, I, I'll hold on to them for a little while and then I'll I'll sell them. Or, or and most recently with my S23, my grandfather switched carriers, so he needed a, another phone. So I ended up actually giving that device to him, and he seems to, to thoroughly be enjoying it. Um, the last phone that he had was, ooh, it's super dusty and it's been on the ground for weeks now, but it's this Motorola something. Let me put that back down there. Look, in fact, I should just store it somewhere else. <laughs> but the S23 was a good phone. I, I had zero complaints about it. For me personally, it's just something uh, about Samsung devices that I'm just not the hugest fan of. Uh, and it's probably just one UI, which I know I could put a skin, uh, not a skin, um, a different launcher on top of it and, and run that. But... I think in addition to that, it's also with my experience with the regular S23 and the S22, the battery life has not been great. So not talking about the Ultra or the Plus, but they're, they're small phones. Um, battery capacity for me had been an issue. And it just seems like Samsung's version of Android just consumes so much electricity that a small battery in, in any of their phones uh, is a is a bad combination. So with that being said, I'm probably at some point going to buy an S24, uh, a regular one. Not too sure about the Plus. The Ultra looks appealing, but for the cost, uh, even finding it used, I don't think I would get much benefit from that. Uh, I mean, I've said it time and time again. I'm not a huge fan of huge phones, so the Ultra coming in at 6.7 or 6.8 inches, whatever it is. I've had one super large phone, which was a Moto G Power, and I think that was 6.5 inches. And I said, huh, this is too much. And in fact, I, I also recently had a, a OnePlus 10 Pro, and I ended up returning that one. And, and you know, for several reasons, but one of the reasons uh, was also uh, the fact that the screen was just so massive. And I'm like, I don't, I don't need this much real estate on a phone. But I digress back to the actual unpacked event. And yeah, let's let, let's talk. So from the beginning of their announcements, the main thing pushed this time around was AI. So artificial intelligence. That's that's the big buzzword for things going on this year. And Samsung is no different. So it's oh Galaxy AI. And it's like, okay. And essentially all it is is it's but I guess pattern recognition, machine learning, and some other stuff that either, that's either done locally on the device or things are uploaded to some cloud somewhere. I don't know if it's Samsung database or whatever, but some of the stuff is not done locally on the phone and requires an internet connection. That is not new. That is a very common thing because some of the things that people want these AIs to do uh, require quite a lot of, of horsepower. And even though these phones are getting more powerful, and according to, uh, I want to say it was Mr. Who's the Boss, um, the, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 is more powerful than, the, uh, <laughs> than Apple's A17 Pro, but then the Galaxy is actually using the 8 Gen 3 for Galaxy, and I guess some clocks, some clock speeds have been turned up uh, a little more. So I guess when people start posting benchmarks, they might be even a little higher. And we all know specs aren't everything, but um, 
But, but, but yeah, all that just to say, sometimes the stuff is done locally and other times it's better to have a, a data center <laughs> knock out some of these AI generated requests or request for AI generation. I think that would be the better way of putting it. Um, my personal thoughts and opinions on this new found craze for artificial intelligence is that it's just like a lot of things, a natural progression of how things uh, should go that, okay, I, an uh, individual person, can do things on this computer. However, the time required to do some of these things might be a bit much. So if the computer can just do it for me to kind of automate this process, uh, yeah, I, I could see some, some, some def definite benefits to it. Uh, but my biggest concern and, and two of the features that, that they pointed out for the phone, um, in addition to like image changes and editing and stuff like that, video editing, like, yeah, okay, cool, that, that stuff is nice. Uh, being able to, to erase objects or move objects and essentially recreate a, a, an image that never technically happened. I mean, the Pixel's doing it. I think the iPhone, I don't know what the iPhone does for any AI stuff. I really don't remember from, from their keynote. But I know the pixels doing it, and they're it's like, okay, you take a picture, and oh, I don't like the way that looks. So change things in the picture, and now you've generated a new image, but is not the original picture that was captured when you press the little shutter button on the phone. So those things are cool. Uh, could be a little deceiving at times, but hey, I get it. My concern, um, and it's just how I think it's not going to be abused, but it's going to potentially either lead to just lazy people or vital information being overlooked is essentially the phone can take data and summarize it. And, and that's not a new feature by any means. Heck, I, I remember when I was maybe in high school, if not younger, you know, you could take a paragraph in Microsoft Word and highlight it and click summarize or something, you know. Um, but apparently on the phone, it'll do that. It can maybe put stuff in like a bullet format, clean it up a little bit for you. Um, and just, I guess, save you some time. Uh, how I view it, you know, which that can be good, can be nice, is there's the potential for somebody to send you, yeah, a lot of information that you probably should read and parse through, but you ask the phone to do it for you. And it's possible that some information could either be completely missed or taken out of context. And now the summary isn't what the uh, original author was, was trying to convey. So now you're having a problem and that could, could lead to issues. So we'll see. You know, some people use it, some people won't. Me personally, I don't plan on using that to, to summarize some stuff. Uh, I do know some articles get a little lengthy. Uh, some emails get a little lengthy. And I think a lot of people now have gotten to the point of, at the beginning, saying, hey, here are the key points of what you're about to read. Yes, there are more, there's more detail beneath, but just so you understand what we're trying to address in this particular excerpt, um, here's everything up front. So we'll see how things go as time goes on. Um, two things I didn't like, and it's really just one thing, and, and this is just the nature of it, and in fact, I was... Uh, talking to a friend last night about influencers or whatever, and I just hate the mindset. But it's not new by any means, but it's you have a celebrity endorse a product. And, you know, depending on what the product is, it might make sense. I mean, like when I think about Shaq endorsing printers, I'm like, I mean, are you really, I, I guess you're just a celebrity spokesman. I don't think you're really counting as endorsing it at that point. But it's just, all right, Shaq, I mean, I see you. I understand who you are. I know that you play basketball. Really good basketball player. But when it comes to printers or Papa John's or Buicks or any other things, <laughs> the, the general for auto insurance, it's just like, all right, you're just a face. Cool. I, I don't think I felt any stronger about any of those products as a result of Shaq being in them. Uh, when it comes to the general auto insurance, maybe I remember them a little more, and I think that's part of it. But when it comes to this particular endeavor, the fact that Samsung brought out Mr. Beast, or really, th they had a pre-recorded video of him doing some stuff with the camera uh, and some of the AI magic. And I'm like, okay, you know, like, I, I guess that's cool. I mean, I've seen maybe one of Mr. Beast's videos, and 
the realm of smartphone endorsement doesn't really seem like that's something he needs to be a part of. I'm sure Samsung gave him a boatload of money to do it. <laughs> uh, in addition to most likely a free phone um, and maybe some other accessories to go along with the phone. But uh, yeah, I was just like, you know what? Seeing him on screen made me want the phone less. It's not going to impact my desire to actually get one. I know I'm, I'm, I'm going to still get one, like I said before, but I, I just don't like it. I felt it was completely unnecessary. They could have used one of the regular Samsung employees to convey the information he was conveying. Same thing with po Pokemon. I, the only reason I know who she is is through other YouTubers talking about her as a result of some of the stuff that she's done. I, I think she's just an influence. I think she's a gamer. Yeah. And that's what she was talking about in the, uh, in her little section. And even then I, that makes a little more sense, you know, like, Oh, okay. Um, she games, how much does she gain on a phone? No idea. But, yeah, it's just annoying. You know, I don't like it. I get why companies do it, but I'm just like, all right, again, use either a Samsung employee or bring in like a an app developer or, you know, an app studio or something. Yeah, whatever. A game studio and and go about it that way. But, you know, I just don't like it, but I understand why they did it. Um, cool. So the last thing, at least the last section I want to talk about is pricing. So, so far, phones, phones look fine. They seem to be a step up from last year's phone. Some of the AI stuff is cool. Again, as I've talked about in my Pixel videos and with the iPhone videos, sometimes it's like, okay, there's no hardware differences between these devices, but you're limiting these features to these newer phones, even though they could be done on the older phones, but, you know, whatever, I get it. Um, and then that, you know, with these new features, sometimes prices go up, sometimes prices stay static. I think once prices actually dropped and you're like, what? <laughs> oh, price went down? Great. But for these, I don't remember all of the starting prices for the phones um, from last year. But this year, the base Galaxy S23, which I'm just going to assume starts with 128 gigs of storage, 8 gigs of RAM probably, uh, starts at $800. Um, $1,000 for the S24 Plus. Four plus, and I hope I said S24 uh, at the beginning right there. And the S24 Ultra starts at $1,300. I'm sorry, yeah, off topic, maybe I'll put it on the screen what those base storage configurations are. But pricing-wise, I guess those are fair prices. Um, like I said, I don't think I'll buy the Ultra. The Plus depends on if I'm able to find it at an affordable price in the used market. Um, but the base one is usually the one that I look at. I mean, I have a base iPhone 15. I have a base Pixel 8. Um, I've purchased the base S23. Uh, so yeah, I don't, I don't think I'll buy any of the other models or any of the spec up ones. Uh, again, unless I'm able to, to, to find one that is affordable. Um, but with those prices come an, another new announcement for Samsung, which Google already mentioned earlier uh, for their devices, seven years of support. So that's seven years of software slash up, uh, operating system upgrades, as well as security updates. Okay. <laughs> as I mentioned in my, my Pixel 8 video, uh, okay, that's cool. How practical is that going to be? Uh, how often are you going to receive those updates? Um, is it going to happen in a timely manner for the first or maybe two years of the phone? Cool. But when we start hitting years three, four, and five, are you getting the security, the monthly security update or is it every other? Is it every three? Is it once a quarter? Now, when you're at year six and seven, Samsung by no means is going to be focused on a phone that's seven years old. So I wonder what, what does the bare minimum of software support look like for these companies where they've agreed to support it, but they didn't say exactly in to what degree once it gets up there in age. So we'll see what happens. But the one thing that a lot of people commented on in, in that video about Google's um, announcement of seven years of support is one, yeah, it's good for people who want to hold on to devices longer. Cool, yeah, I get that. I mean, as long as you take care of the phone, you should be fine. Uh, at one point in time, you'll probably need to get a battery replacement. Um, and then hopefully the performance of the device keeps up and you're able to actually use it for that long period of time. Only time will tell. We, we, we don't know. Uh, I mean, with Apple, I think 
they were supporting their devices the longest, might have been six or seven years, that that iPhone 6S just didn't die. <laughs> Stick, stuck around for a while. Um, and now I think the oldest supported phone, I want to say, is the iPhone 10. Um, so, so yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see what, what happens. And another thing that people point out, in addition to, okay, you can pass your phone down to somebody else or you can keep using it longer. Um, another thing that somebody pointed out is the fact that with extended software support, there's the possibility, and again, it's just the possibility that the resale value for your device will now be higher. Just the possibility. And what I'm looking for now, because I already looked at it earlier, and now I just want to give some actual pricing, is the fact that Android devices just don't hold their values. I mean, yes, for a while, it, it might have been because they weren't supported for a long period of time, but uh, that's not the only reason. <laughs> yeah, like that, that's just, you know, that's just not the only reason. I mean, four years of support, uh, the galaxies, yeah, I, I'm not going to try to backtrack. The pixels have, I think three, three to four was kind of the, the standard. I think three years was it was for a while. And then I want to say, yeah, it kind of skyrocketed up to seven. Uh, but last year when I got that Galaxy S23, I want to say it was announced just like this year in, in January. And I probably purchased it sometime in the summer. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 mean, I guess I could look at my purchase history right now and go back into last year, since August, so July. So yeah, I bought a Galaxy S23 in July for 500 bucks. So that's $800 off. Sorry, <laughs> that's $300 off. And that's okay, you know? Um, so yeah, not quite 50% off, but yeah, 300 bucks from an $800 phone just a, a few months later. And if I had, had been more, I guess, fastidious, I know even back then in July of last year, I could have found a, a better price. Uh, the year prior, I think I found some really good prices on those S22s that I had purchased. And in fact, I'm scrolling back even further and let's see if I'm able to find any of those. All right, so, so in April of 2022, I got an S22 for $402. I want to say that the starting price was 800 bucks that year as well. So at that point, that is 50% off or, you know, a few dollars more than 50% off. But after taxes, since you're being taxing a, a cheaper a cheaper product, yeah, it's that 50% off. And that was, that was April. <laughs> so again, as I was saying, being fastidious and with that particular one, I do know that the seller had not yet sold a bunch of items. So people were probably a little skeptical. Um, but yeah, like it, it, that's a risk you take and it's possible that you get hosed and it's also possible that you get a really good device. But what I was getting at is that even though the Pixel 8 has been released, announced, released, and has been out since October, let's just say, Google has also announced seven years of support. I'm looking at, uh, on eBay right now and for items that have already been sold, even with knowing that these devices have eight, uh, sorry, seven years of support, um, just going down, you have a Pixel 8 that was sold for 500 bucks. Uh, another one that sold for $377. Um, this one, there's, a, there's some Pixel 8 Pros in here, and even those are a little cheaper, $649. Um, sorry, that Pixel 8 Pros, yeah. Pixel 8, $629, uh, $509, $399, that one says for parts only, so I'd have to click on to see exactly what's potentially wrong with it. So even, I'll say roughly $300 off, I'm oh, sorry, $200 off because it, it was, what, $799 this year? No, $699. Yeah, they, were six, they started at $699. So um, $200 off, you know, a couple months out, and that's only going to go down. Here's one, for, again, for $377, so, uh, and that's $300 bucks off, three, $377 or best offer, so who knows if the person actually bought it at that 377 price so all that to say there's no guarantee that extended support is going to lead to higher resale values 
And that's just that. <laughs> yep, that is just that. And while I am excited for that extended support, what I want to see, and I talked about it in my Zen phone videos, um, in addition to extended software support is rapid updates. Now, things have improved. Yeah, they certainly have, but there's still a lot of work to do. And I have my Zen phone nine right here. Uh, and my Zen phone 10 is over there. Uh, but the issue I was having in terms of uh, just these two devices, not looking at the greater Android ecosystem is fragmentation. And it's okay. The Zen phone 10 has Android 14, but it has the December 2023 security update. However, the Zen phone 9 still has Android 13, but has the January security update and whatever other things might have come with just security uh, patches and stuff. So, yeah, Samsung and Google do a pretty good job of the monthly stuff, so I'm hopefully they'll better keep it up. And yeah, in addition to them committing to such long periods of time, I hope that other companies do the same. Um, and yeah, the, the issue though, and it's good on Samsung, but you know, it, it can lead to problems is that it's clear that the three big companies Apple, Google, and Samsung are okay with this extended support because one, they have the resources to do it. Uh, and also they, all three of them are building out their ecosystems. So yeah, they are comfortable supporting devices longer because, oh, let's say you buy an S24 in two and a half years. Cool. Yeah. There's also now an, a chance that you might get another, you know, get a watch or the Pixel Buds, or you might even buy the S24 this year. But you'll keep that phone for six, seven years. Uh, but then during that time frame, you will have purchased the accessories and things like that. So, yeah, they're developing their ecosystems. And in order to have a, a viable ecosystem, you need to provide the support. And it looks like they are willing to do the work. Uh, but more importantly, they have the resources to actually do it. So in summary, I enjoyed the Galaxy event. Uh, I will purchase one of them at, at some point in time. I mean... I know I'll be way behind the curve when I actually do it, <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I can imagine my thoughts and opinions of the S24 are going to be the same as they were for the S23, but it's nice to be able to play around with some of the stuff and just see exactly how it works. I'll probably watch videos about the features of the phone when I actually get it in a couple of months and uh, yeah, make some additional content talking about my experiences and so until then, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you took the time to watch this, the Samsung Unpacked event. Um, and yeah, 